na iwa sa ningaw na ni Bakatara, baka binibin na tayo. Bula! Oi, eu sou a Sala Bilawa. Não vou ter que ir ao menos de aqui na Tinica Rona Caloco. É na Sina Levo de Monite que não vou arrombo cá. Caco Neva Latana, não me sou inicializar. Na Caixa Maria Andola Loma, Leone Vani Ninau. O Mgori que é de mãe na de aqui na Tinica Rona Caloco. É na Sina Levo de Monite que não vou arrombo cá. É na Bula FM. Namban 2 é na Serre. Bula, I'm DJ Toro. Join me every Monday to Thursday, 7 until midnight. The premium classics on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Tonight, history in the making, senior sugarcane farmers to start receiving pension. No life of luxury for money launderers and tax evaders. And national carrier to increase flights to popular destinations. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. Leading our bulletin tonight, the sugarcane industry has made a major breakthrough. For the first time in history, elderly growers will be given a pension every month for the rest of their lives. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbani Marama says Fiji's economy has been built by the sector through sweat and toil of farmers and it is time to honour their hard work. As Christopher Chan reports, close to 400 senior cane farmers will get $100 a month. People were dancing to the milestone achievement even before the PM arrived and he was given a rousing welcome in bar this morning. Hundreds gathered. For the first time, these senior farmers are being paid, something that has never been done before. I can think of no group in Fiji more deserving than veteran cane growers who have been the backbone of our country. Our cane farmers were the ones who contributed to generating revenue for our country, helping to build roads, build hospitals and schools. This is the initiative of the Rarawai and Penang Cane Producers Association through funding from its $1.5 million fair trade premium fund. Farmers age 70 and over will get $100 every month. 78 farmers receive their checks today. The Fijian economy has been built on the sugarcane industry and the sweat and toil of these farmers. I don't believe that this fact has been acknowledged widely enough. Indeed, I'm saddened by the fact that it never was. While this has been hailed as a stepping stone to continue the revival of the industry, the government is making more inroads. Fijian cane growers will receive nearly $80 a ton for their recent crop instead of less than $50 a ton two and a half years ago. It's a stunning result. The pension scheme has close to 410 farmers, but this will increase in years to come to cater for our aging sugarcane growers. Christopher Chan, FBC News. Authorities expect to make a huge dent in money laundering and tax evasion cases with the proceeds of crime amendment decree. The law allows the seizure of any property, asset or any money that's obtained. Edwin Nand explains. The amendment ensures that no one can enjoy a life of luxury if they are doing so illegally. When a person is convicted for a serious offence, he or she will end up in jail and, and serve the jail term and will come out and would, was allowed to enjoy the criminal profit. That is no longer the case. The whole intent and idea and objective of um, the anti-money laundering laws currently and the new uh, unexplained provisions is to deprive the criminal of the enjoyment of the criminal wealth. Even if a person isn't convicted of a crime, they can lose all their money and property if they fail to prove that their earnings are all legitimate. Typically, investigating um, financial fraud and money laundering and proceeds of crime cases is not easy. These are complex cases, and criminal, criminals nowadays are becoming a lot smarter. 
Uh, so it warrants uh, us to look at other opportunities and evidence that are there. The amendments allow the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority, the Financial Intelligence Unit, police and other authorities to collaborate, meaning it's easier to track down culprits. Uh, this networking will uh, solve the matter uh, very effectively and efficiently, which was not uh, done traditionally. Accountants and lawyers also have to come clean if they suspect their client is making money on the side. Confidentiality provisions no longer apply. So how do we find people with unexplained wealth? A classic example would be somebody with a comfortable life but no source of income, has a home, a car and maybe even travels overseas. This has been known to be the case with people in the marijuana trade. Even if the state can't prove you're doing it, they can take away your luxuries with a court order. Edwin Nand, FBC News. Air Pacific will increase its flights to popular destinations following the arrival of its second new Airbus. Prime Minister of Orenge Mbani Marama says the aircraft is the pride of the country and a flying billboard that will entice more visitors to our shores. Christopher Chand reports. A water cannon salute, welcoming home the Namukailau, Fiji's second Airbus A330. Proud villages of Namukailau, to which the plane is named after, cheered on, celebrating the arrival of the new aircraft. It's another milestone achievement for the national carrier as it positions itself against competition. They are hugely important for the new Fiji Airways and for every Fijian because they are designed to bring millions of visitors to our shores in the coming years to underpin the strength of our economy and ensure, and ensure the nation's prosperity. The aircraft is named after the island that Makareta Matemosi hails from, the artist who drew the new designs for Fiji Airways. Because now, Namukai Lao isn't just a small obscure island in Lao, but the name on a state-of-the-art aircraft that millions of people will see at airports around the world. The new additions to the fleet will without a doubt propel the airline to new heights. The A330s will serve important cities including Auckland, Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, Hong Kong and Los Angeles, making it possible to increase frequencies throughout 2013 creating more connectivity and travel options for the South Pacific. Clearly, by any measure, Fiji's national airline is now punching well above its weight on the international scene. This aircraft will go into service on June 3rd with a flight to Sydney, one of its most important destinations. On June 19th, the airline will change its name to Fiji Airways. Christopher Chan, FBC News. The government is making sure mineral resource development in the country doesn't put the environment at risk. Director Mineral Resources Malakai Finau says Fiji is one of the few countries in the world which has never had an environmental disaster due to mining and they would like to keep it that way. Ellen Otorangai View has more. A couple of years ago, the only mining activity in Fiji was at the Vatukola gold mine. Today we have bauxite mining, manganese mining and soon there will be copper mining. Such developments can have drastic impacts on the environment. You can see uh, in other parts of the world, you know, due to bad uh, practices by companies, you know, there are huge uh, environmental issues, eh? for which we are in Fiji are trying to avoid it, eh? uh, given our stage in uh, development, eh? in mineral development. Eh? All applications for mining licenses will require an environment impact assessment to be done first. This is to ensure there is no or minimal damage to the environment. We also have an environment duty to look at the environment uh, from the potential uh, degradation uh, impacts and effects of uh, mineral resource development in uh, mining. So far, we have managed to minimize the risks. We've been fortunate we haven't had a huge uh, environmental disaster in Fiji you know, due to impacts of uh, mineral resource development and mining and we would like to keep it that way. Fiji's potential in mineral resource development is huge and will one way or the other put pressure on natural resources. How the department will monitor this, only time will tell. Eleanor Torangaviu, FBC News.
Just ahead, city ranges to patrol popular hangouts in the capital. Find out more after the break. आपकी शादी होने वाली है पांच पांच बच्चे होंगे पांच 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 हाय मैं हूँ आपकी सहेली वेणु सुनते रहेंगे मिर्च एफ एम मैं हूँ ना नौ से बारह बजे तक I wake up in the morning. I prefer to go down to the gym, get a bit of physical work done. Also, later on in the day, I decide to go through for meditation. I do a bit of reading to find out what the latest songs are. A bit of research. And for me, it's all about the listeners. Hey, what's up? I'm Rio, and this is the Traffic Jam every weekday from three o'clock to seven, only on Today FM. Today is hit music. What's up? Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. Calls have been made by the people of Rotuma for more consultations on the revised Rotuma Act 2013 and the Rotuma Lands Act 2013 before they become law. Concerns were raised at the recent Rotuma Council meeting that the two acts would be detrimental for the future of the Rotuman people if not properly discussed. But as Abi Salamidoka reports, the call may have been made a little too late. It was at this meeting that concerns were raised about the two Rotuma Acts. If there are some provisions in the Amendment uh, Act that need to be addressed, uh, we are going to raise that before it's be promulgated and become law. We were given the opportunity for that. It was uh, brought to the island, it was discussed, and uh, because people were not so serious uh, about it uh, then, and uh, they are raising the issue. Now, Antonio Moera says one of the main concerns lies with their land. The definition of Rutuman is a Rutuman person or a person who has a, a Rutuman descent, which is they never specified the amount of Rutuman blood that you have. And it's very risky because if they do not place a uh, criteria for the uh, uh, entitlement to be registered in the Volneca Humbula, sooner or later our lands will be. Uh, alienated from our indigenous rotumens. Concerns that you are raising before these things become slow and that there should be some representation made directly to government. At the moment we don't have it. We do not intend to have it yet. But I'm sure we, we're not blind, neither deaf to hear. So, uh, and uh, we will make the judgment on call whether that it would be necessary or not. Uh, the revised Rotuma Act and the Rotuma Lands Act 2013 is undergoing its final touches at the Office of the Attorney General and the Solicitor General. Apisalome Doka, FBC News. The Silver City Council is frustrated with the ineffectiveness of litter laws. After spending thousands of dollars to improve the look of the capital, Special Administrator Chando Maria says the problem is at its worst ever. Ritika Pratap reports. This new Seabreeze walkway in Nesese has received a lot of praise since its launch. However, the lack of pride by people visiting the place is a concern. It is sad to see that uh, a lot of vandalism has been uh, going on in the, in the Seabreeze uh, walkway. Uh, we have got beautiful gardens and people have been stealing plants from that area and that is not right. This reclaimed area is common for leisure activities, family fun time and even a popular spot for joggers. But not everyone is making the right use of amenities provided by the council. But what we see is people would probably eat their lunch and just throw their rubbish uh, on the ground or probably throw the rubbish uh, on the roadside or throw it on the, on the seaside. If the rubbish bins are full, I mean, one should understand why can't you take the rubbish with... To deal with this growing problem, the council will now have city rangers patrolling the area during busy times. But Chandu Maria says, even then, when offenders are caught, some give false information to avoid paying fines. For example, my name is Chandu Maria, and I will give my name as uh, Ram Singh, and my address uh, is, I'll give a wrong address. So when they go there, they look for Ram, Ram Singh, there's no Ram Singh in the area. It's because of this that Umaria has recommended that the voter registration cards be made a national ID and compulsory for people to carry at all times. Ritika Pratap, FBC News.
Food safety is a focal point of the health ministry, and to identify areas of concern, the ministry has adopted an international approach. It is called the Hazard Analysis and Critical Control Points Approach. Chanel Sivan explains. All food processes in the country have to be HACEP certified by 2015, which includes restaurants, eateries and other food sellers. Head of Food Safety for the Health Ministry, Deep Chan, says they are training government and municipal council health staff in identifying areas that need better hygiene practices. HACEP is a is an international uh, control measures that will be put in place where critical points will be uh, analyzed and uh, that uh, the risk of food being contaminated and uh, deteriorated is uh, reduced. One of the most recognized uh, uh, way for food consultant Chope Tamani says the export industry has been adhering to the requirements in food safety, but. The real concern lies with the local industry, where standards need to be lifted. When you look at restaurants, um, restaurants need to take care of where they buy the, the, uh, you know, the foods they buy, the ingredients they buy. Uh, they need to know, they need to, 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 to set standards of what they buy. A lot has been said in the past about food safety in the country. While this stand taken by the ministry, food sellers will need to be more vigilant, while the public can expect much better services. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. It's Friday night sports time with Jamie and you were saying earlier the Jasper William athletes celebrated their win today? That's right Jackie, we take a look at the celebrations after the break and we also check out the latest on the big Suva Lambasa soccer league match this weekend. That and more coming up, stay with us. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9am to 2pm on The Centre Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. जहाँ हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू, वो है आपका अपना घर संसार। Join me on घर संसार Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. Only on Radio Fiji 2. Welcome back. You with FBC Sports. Jasper Williams High School in Lautoka was a hive of activity today as students celebrated their win at the Fiji Finals last week. The Purple Brigade created history at the Games by taking out the girls' division for the first time ever. And today the entire school came together to celebrate the win with the athletes as the centre of attention. Suva and Lambasa meeting the feature clash of the Fiji Sun GP Batteries League, Football League on Sunday. Indra Singh spoke with officials from both teams and Fiji FA and found out the upcoming encounter is expected to be a thrill of a match. It's one of the biggest games of the season and already hopes are for a fiery encounter. And Fiji FA is anticipating the match between Suva and Lambasa could rake in a big turnout. Lambasa versus uh, Suva, that, that will be a game uh, to watch and uh, a lot of interest has been uh, generated by the soccer fans of uh, Vanualevu. Those who are staying in the Nasinu Corridor, and I, I'm 100% uh, sure that uh, a lot of people are going to come in full force. And uh, uh, you know, last week uh, we had a jam packed house, and we expect the same way this week at uh, the ANZ National Stadium. The hosts have already lost the opening home match of the season at Lodala last weekend. The Suva faithful were not impressed with the 1 0 defeat at the hands of Nandi. And the capital coach understands what needs to be done to overcome the Bamba Singh Alliance. Playing Lambasa and there's a good build up. They are in our pool in the Fiji Fact. Uh, we have to prepare well and try to win this game. Lambasa also say they're looking forward to playing on the new pitch. Lambasa is renowned for close control football and uh, that is something and that we will be able to display um, uh, uh, quite well on the new pitch. Come Sunday, the biggest crowd turnout of the year could be seen. But what the results are and who are the winners and who goes back to the drawing boards remains to be seen. Interesting, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the draws for the Vodafone Fiji Fact were released today. There will be two rounds of matches played at the NZ Stadium with Lambasa featuring against Suva on Saturday, June 15th and then they take on Bath the very next day. The tournament proper takes place at Prince Charles Park from June 21st to the 23rd. 
And today, the NZ Stadium would have boasted hosting the biggest primary athletics meet. However, an unscheduled event marred this occasion with hundreds of students, parents and teachers told to evacuate the main stand. Elaine McDonald witnessed the event, which has opened up a can of worms for the Fiji Sports Council. At the Catholic Primary School's athletics meet, participation matters more than winning any race. We just come to play for fun and even the race. We don't look for trophies and we don't see who becomes the best. We want to involve everyone, therefore it's inclusive. Whether you want to run or not, it's up to you. Whether you want to play or not, it's up to you. Students from 19 Catholic primary schools around Suva had their chance to witness all that was on offer at the refurbished ANZ Stadium. However, all good things came to an end once a fire alarm was activated. In three separate cases, they broke the alarms and, and turned them on. It sort of was the lack of control and um, it's of concern because it meant that everybody had to evacuate the stadium and then uh, while we waited for the fire brigade and to come to turn the alarms off. It may have been just an alarm activated here at the ANZ Stadium, but with the lack of evacuation protocol witnessed here today, is everything truly ready for organisers at this new facility? We will have to analyse everything and um, you know, put together a report on how everything can be done better. And of course, always you can do things better. But today, I think, was an example of where Everybody, when an alarm goes off and they don't see smoke, they keep thinking it's a false alarm. They don't realise that every alarm must be taken seriously. Competition resumed quicker than the evacuation did, as organisers continued without any further concern. It's a situation now being looked into by the facilitators, something hopefully more of a priority for upcoming events. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. Well, that wraps up sports for tonight. I'll be back on Monday. But until then, have a safe weekend. Good night. Investment Fiji has recorded a 100% increase in the number of foreign investment projects registered in the first quarter of this year compared to 2012. According to CEO Ravuni Ulila Kemba, they are on track in enticing new investment into the country. Eleanor Turangai View has more. In the last three months, 41 foreign companies registered their interest to set up business in Fiji. This has an anticipated value of $351 million and employment for over 1,000 people. Australia and New Zealand lead the list of countries who have registered their interest. We must thank the government in the way that uh, the support that has been given, especially the incentives that came out in 2013 um, budget announcement. And when you look at the policy in the way that the government has uh, put in investments, a foreign direct investment policy, it's been very, very attractive and very welcoming. These companies have been given time to meet the requirements needed to set up business here. Normally when they are given foreign investment certificate, they are given a 12-month timeline. Eh? To not only to get the other agencies to approve the agents, and similarly we work hand in hand with them to ensure that the, the process is faster. There is hope these new investment interests will be established by the end of the year. Last year we had, uh, in, by this time we had only four, this year we had six implemented, eh? and uh, so uh, those are some of the ones that were registered uh, late in the year last year, and definitely I would say within the next uh, three to six months, some of those ones that have been registered for this quarter will definitely go into the implementation stage. Eh? Last year alone, close to 150 foreign businesses were established in Fiji, valued at $650 million. Eleanor Turangaviu, FBC News. Time for weather now, and after two days of not seeing you, Jen, I feel like I'm looking at a brand new you. <laughs> Thanks, Jackie. I know, I add brightness to your life. Back to weather, and I'm sure many people took advantage of the lovely conditions today and had lunch in parks around the country. Aside from cloudiness in the usual places, it was the kind of weather you'd expect in the tropics. Moving on to temperatures, all our major centres, except for Savasavu, are on 32 degrees today. 
tomorrow, sunny skies all around again, except for Suva and Savu Savu, who are likely to experience brief showers. So if you're having a barbecue in either of these two places, I suggest you keep it on the veranda or invest in some really big umbrellas. Now, because of the great feedback we've had on our photo of Rotuma this week, we decided to show another one. Oenafa Beach is in the spotlight this evening, and we have Api to thank for that. You all have a fun, relaxing weekend now, because I'll be doing the same. Until Monday, stay safe and stay smiling. Thanks so much for that, Jen. Just a quick look at the headlines. History in the making, senior sugarcane farmers to start receiving pension. No life of luxury for money launderers and tax evaders. A national carrier to increase flights to popular destinations. To the poll question now, and we ask... Is it worth Fiji playing the classic All Blacks instead of the main team for centenary celebrations? To take part, visit www.fbc.com.fj. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. I'll see you again on Monday. Until then, you have yourselves a wonderful, safe weekend. More than Martha. Nimbula, Medango Nimilote in Nice Sorotomboa. Namaka win a rookie known on a Vekavi Moniti Kin of Wakarabuka. Wrong men of your summer can be book of Barotakin in Recomalolo and Radio Fiji one and a Wongani Pioniano. The Namakiokina Nisambula Vinaka, Oya one Kamanalani, or Nina Dormu Yao, when a Yua Kinaru and a Visinga, when a Moniti Kin of Wakarabuka and Radio Fiji one and Domi Viti Wongani Pioniano. Nama katalanga na bingo na sasi biani na tin nakaloko na bingo ni bukilulu kena bima mani walu na bingo ni bakaruai mena muzani walu ninge namaka.